Okay, so Paul, a company using the bio-based feedstock to produce the bio-based product does not mean that they are sustainable, right? So there are a lot of angles to be achieved in order to be sustainable. Hi everyone and welcome to the latest episode of World Biomarket Insights TV. My name is Paul MacDonald and I'm delighted today to be joined by Panusa, Sales and Marketing Manager at ABT, Advanced Biochemical Thailand. Hi Panusa, how are you today? Hi Paul, so very nice to be here today. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm really excited to have you on our, on our TV channel and learn everything about ABT. So today's episode is entitled Unlocking the Potential of Bio-Based Value Chains. Our viewers are going to be interested to learn all about ECH from Renewable Carbon, its applications, and how it compares to Petro-Based ECH. So before we get into the detail, maybe you can give me a little bit of a background. So I believe ABT has been operational since 2012. So perhaps you can give me some uh, background on the business. Yes, of course, our company Advanced Biochemical Thailand start operations since February 2012. Our initial nameplate capacity started from 100,000 metric tons a year, which later on be the bottleneck in 2020 to 120,000 metric tons a year. And our plant is located in Mataput Industrial Estate, Rayong Province, Thailand, a key area of the, the industry in Thailand. And ABT is 100% owned by AGC Vinitai, a leading chloralkaline and PVC manufacturers in Thailand. And we are a part of AGC Group Japan. Okay, so you've got quite a big sort of infrastructure around your business then. Uh, so basically we are, so, we are, a part, let's say that the uh, AGC group, of course, the uh, one major, major business is for the glass business and AGC also having the chemical business, which is mainly focused on chloralkaline and chlorine. So they are producing caustic soda and chlorine. And AGC Vinitai is a, their subsidiary in Thailand who producing chlorine and chlorine derivative, PVC, and they own our company, which is another Korean derivative, producing uh, apicorohydrin or ECH. Excellent, thank you. And you just bring me very nicely onto my next question. So you manufacture a bio-based epichlorohydrin, ECH, from 100% renewable carbon under the Apinity trademark. So can you talk me through, talk me through the manufacturing process, please? Okay, as you mentioned, Paul, Apinity is bio-based, epichlorohydrin or bio-based ECH with drop-in property. Uh, drop-in property meaning that we have the same chemicals and physical property with the traditional ECH. And the traditional ECH is made from propylene, a petrochemical derived from petroleum. But for Apinity, our major feedstock is refined glycerin derived from vegetable oil. And these allow us to offer a product with 100% bio-based carbon content and 100% bio uh, renewable carbon. And for glycerin, our feedstock is derived as a byproduct from the biodiesel and oleochemical productions. And on top of that, in general, for every uh, epichlorohydrin or ECH production, uh, the production will generate significant amount of brine. And at our plan, we have a technology to treat this brine and recycle it back to the process at our mother company. So we can say that we have zero wastewater from the process. Great. So that's a, that's a very nice example of a circular business model, right? Yes, absolutely. Yes. Great. And what are the, um, what are the main applications that Apinity is used for? Okay, so Apinity can be used in a wide range of industry, but major use 
it's used as a precursor to produce epoxy resin. And epoxy resin can be used uh, to produce uh, protective coating. So it's help coating your car or the infrastructure. And uh, epoxy resin can be used to coat on the printed circuit board, which is the element in all electronic components. So let's say in your mobile phone, you're gonna have a PCB and that PCB or printed circuit board was coated, will be coated by the epoxy resin. And uh, epoxy resin is used to produce adhesive. So either for the DIY use at home or for the industrial scale. And last but not least, epoxy resin is used uh, to produce advanced composite. Namely, it used to produce the wind turbine blade. But for non-epoxy sector, epicarohydrin also having, uh, let's say ep epicarohydrin uh, is used to produce chemical intermediate in a wide range of application started from water treatment chemicals, paper chemicals, even as surfactants for personal care products, also synthetic rubber and many more. Wow, so there's a, there's a, there's a huge um, scope for your product to be used throughout industry. So the, the opportunities sound exciting and, and, and almost endless. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, so and what are the, I guess, what are, what are the major benefits of using Apinity? Well, the benefit of using Apinity, I would begin with the environmental part, the environmental benefit part. So with Apinity, so the customer and downstream user can lighter uh, their carbon footprint. So in the sense that they're seeking for the lower emission product along the value chain or on the other environmental aspects, some product, they want to increase the bio-based content. So with 100% bio-based carbon content in Apenity, it can help be, uh, increasing the product along down the line. And for with, a, as I mentioned earlier, Apenity having drop in property. So for, a, uh, for the customer who replacing traditional ECH with Apenity, they can change without any switching cost or without any modification in that process. And last but not least, so with our 10 years experience uh, at ABT and much longer experience at our mother company uh, with the skill team, so we have been proven to be a reliable suppliers to our customer in the global market who provide a stable supply and at a competitive price. Well, I think that you, one, you touched on many very interesting things there. One of the very interesting things is around, um, you know, at our conference, people are looking for drop-in products. And one of the barriers to using those drop-in products is around the scalability of those products and also the price point. So clearly you're saying that the price point is neutral uh, and you're able to provide the, uh, the amount of this product at scale for your customers. Yes, absolutely. So we are the bio-based plan at the, let's say, at the industrial scale. So we need to, uh, uh, let's say, we need to be competitive in order to keep this brand running. And thank you for today. Uh, let's say with the current global trend, we receive a greater interest from the customer and the downstream user, which also supporting uh, mutual growth. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't surprise me at all. You know, everybody I speak to, um, is all looking for um, scalability. And one of the topics um, at our event in the Netherlands next year is all about how does the community come together to improve the scalability of these solutions so that we accelerate to a bio-based economy um, as quick as possible, which is obviously um, incredibly important. Um, um, I guess, is there is there one sector, you, you mentioned a, quite a, a wide variety of sectors, is there one sector that is proving very interested in Apinity and, and why do you think that is? Okay, so I can share with you, Paul, because recently we received a strong interest from the major sector, which is the epoxy resin. A great interest coming from the fact that they would like to offer the bio-based epoxy resin, which of course derived from Apinity or from the bio-based epicarohydrin. So because epoxy resin can be used in a coating, 
and the coaching can be applied in the key and industry. Started from uh, automotive, from construction, or even the aer aeronautics or any industrial sector. So with the bio-based uh, product, with the lighter carbon uh, footprint product, it can help uh, each user or each an industry or even each country can meet the, uh, let's say, carbon uh, emission reduction target. So yeah. this is one of the, let's say, promising sectors that uh, Epanity can help epoxy in coating to help downstream user uh, meeting the environmental target or the sustainability development goals. Yes. And is and is there any is there any one sector that surprised you? You know, is there anybody that's got in contact with your team and you almost thought, wow, I we never thought we never thought that that sector would be interested in in our great product. Yes, I guess that you would be surprised as well, Paul, because of uh, along the along the conversation we have, you heard that our plan in the industrial estate, our major application will serve for the coating, the cars, and everything in the industrial scale. But believe it or not, so you can find affinity in uh, one of your facial soap or hand soap because it can uh, affinity uh, is used to produce the bio based surfactant. And it is the mild surfactants that will be used to wash your face or wash your hand. And another surprising uh, application you found on your face. <laughs> Affinity can use uh, to produce the bio-based lens monomers as well. So now you can see clearer at the lighter carbon footprint. Right. Okay. Excellent. Wow. That's, uh, yeah, that's great. Um, okay. Very, very interesting. Um, one of my questions was when I was doing my research on your on your company, I saw on your website. So I want to I want to uh, talk a little bit about some of the claims um, that you make on your on, on your website. And you're very transparent, but I want to talk about some of those claims. So on your website, you state that the LCA found in Apinity's global warming potential is up to 67 percent lower than for uh, petro based ECH. So can you just sort of explain a little bit further about how you came to those findings? Oh, definitely. Because of, uh, as we talk about the CO2 emission reductions, so we need to be more, uh, how to say, uh, specific. So that's why our company decided to conduct the latest LCA or life cycle assessment, which is a comparative LCA from cradle to gate between produ uh, producing the traditional uh, epicarohydrin out of the propylene and comparing with the cradle to gate to produce one metric ton of affinity. And these uh, LCA results show that uh, affinity can uh, give lower global warming potential for up to 67%. And it can help, uh, how to say, the, this is the scientific data so that uh, it can help uh, passing the number or the, the, the benefit along the value chains to the customer who want to, to know how much carbon uh, redu reduction they can achieve by using Affinity. Yes. Yeah, okay. Um, and I also saw that um, on your website, you place a lot of emphasis on the certification of Affinity. So you are certified by RSB, which is the Roundtable on Sustainable Biomaterials, RSPO, which is the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil, USDA Bio Preferred, and Ecovidis. Again, why is, you know, that's quite robust. Why is that important to ABT? Okay, so Paul, a company using the bio-based feedstock to produce the bio-based product does not mean that they are sustainable, right? So there are a lot of angles to be achieved in order to be sustainable. So to begin with the, the RSB or the Roundtable on Sustainable Biomaterial. So this certification uh, proves that uh, we having the sustainable production. And our second is our product is a uh, mitigate climate change, can help mitigate climate change by its lower carbon emission the CO2 emissions. And last one, with the bio-based feedstock or with the renewable feedstock, it helps uh, low, uh, 
lowering the depletion of fossil fuels. So these are the three main claims from the RSB. And we are proud to say that ABT is the first bio-based chemical operator in Asia to be certified by the RSB since 2015. And for the RSPO, which is the Roundtable on Sustainable Palm Oil, this certificate showing our company commitment to support the use of the sustainable palm oil along the supply chain. And you mentioned about the USDA bio prefer. So these demonstrate the bio-based carbon content and is proved uh, and is easy for the end customer to pass on the, uh, this carbon content to in order to increase their uh, bio-based carbon content in their product. And last one is the echo Vadit, as everyone knows. So we uh, has been awarded gold medals for the three consecutive years for the echo Vadit. Yes. Okay, well, first of all, congratulations on, uh, on, 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 on that award. And I think I also want to congratulate you on, on your transparency and, and, making, and making that such a core part of your, your value proposition. I think what you said at the start of that, of, of answering my question, whereby just because it's bio, it doesn't mean it's sustainable. And I think that's a very powerful statement that you said. Um, and I know that one of the key topics at our, at our event and my subsequent conversations I have with many, many people, um, it's around certification. It's around consistency of communication so that the bio sector makes it easier for your customers to understand you and to trust you as well. And again, that goes back to um, working together so that we accelerate this transition away from fossil and towards bio. And I certainly think what you're doing and with that type of certification is really going to help. Yes, yes, indeed. And uh, I think we have been seeing people joining this part more and more in uh, in today yes yeah great okay well listen producer we're coming towards the end of our uh, of our interview sadly um but f uh, my final question i suppose is what types of what type what types of organizations would you like to collaborate with in the future you know some of those might be listening to this um, to this episode of uh, World Biomarket Insights TV. So um, who would you invite to come and have a conversation with you? So thank you for the opportunity. So we, are, we would like to work with a company who seriously want to make the products more sustainable now. Not only from the epoxy resin sector, but as you heard that uh, we can serve in the wide range of the product and application. And with our experience at more uh, 10 years of producing this bio-based epicorohydrin, we are ready to supply and we are ready to help the customer and downstream user to uh, produce the product with higher renewable content or even help the company uh, to reach their goals. For example, in terms of the net carbon zero goals, which is seem to be today topic for everyone. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, thank you ever so much, um, Palusa. Um, but before we end this episode, I'd just like to invite any collaborative bio pioneers to feel free to reach out to me at paul at worldbiomarkets.com and let's explore what we can do together. Um, Palusa, that pretty much wraps up um, this uh, episode. So I would just like to thank you for your time and your insights and wish you and the team all the very best for the, uh, for the rest of the year. Thank you very much, Paul. It's nice talking to you. Mm -hmm.